much, Ms. DeLauro. Uh, Mr. Molinar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, Secretary Vilsack. Uh, as you know, small farms are struggling to get by as labor costs skyrocket. Many farmers and growers in my district utilize the H-2A program, but the constant increases in the adverse effect wage rate are unsustainable. I'm hearing from fifth and sixth generation farmers that they may only have one to two years left before they are forced to leave the business because the costs are too high. Farmers have told me their H-2A workers are just as concerned about the cost hikes. The workers know their job will be lost if the farm goes out of business. I have legislation, the Supporting Farm Operations Act, which would pause these increases for two years and help prevent some American farms from shutting down. Yet as this freeze would give farmers breathing room, the AWER is set by data collected by the Farm Labor Survey at USDA. What are USDA and the National Agricultural Statistics Service doing to ensure the Farm Labor Survey is representative for each state? We are doing what our scientists and data collectors always do, which is to try to do the very best job of collecting the most accurate information. I would say that I think a response, a better response uh, to all of this would be to pass the Farm Worker Modernization Act, which Representative Newhouse and others have proposed, because that would have, that would have frozen for a year and then would have created a, a, a range under which the income could Mr. Uh, Mr. Go Secretary, up or I, I understand that bill, but that didn't bill, didn't pass, it didn't get well, it signed into passed. law. Well, but as the Secretary of Agriculture, how are you standing up for American farmers and telling your counterpart at the Department of Labor that her regulations are hurting American farmers? You know, there are two, there are two parties here. Uh, in addition to the farmers, there are also the hardworking farm workers. And this is tough work. It's hard work. Part of the challenge with these wage rates is uh, the, uh, the situation where a, far, a farm worker is asked to do more than farm work, is asked to do a skilled position, a skilled job, and that's where a lot of the adjustment has taken place. So when they're asked to do more than just a farm job, a farm worker job, they're asked to do a, a skilled job, isn't it fair to make sure that they are adequately compensated for that job? Absolutely. Well, that's Unfortunately, part of the, that's part of the are, challenge. They are overcompensated well, and they're putting farms at risk. I don't think the status quo is going to work I, for I don't farmers that, in America. I don't know that they're overcompensated. I, well, if, sure if you talk to the farmers, the fifth and sixth generation farmers in my district, they are not going to make it as farmers. I, I, and, I, I don't have any doubt that farmers uh, are are concerned about this and they and but it they also need to make sure they understand that fixing the system is is the way to do this it isn't just a freeze for a year or two that's just going to delay the, the well, inevitable you got to fix the system well i'm asking what you're doing to stand up for those farmers right now stand up for farmers every single day sir. well the every single day every the single day of Sir, the Department I of Income. I, I, okay. I work to sir, export. Sir, sir but, please know, let me finish my question. The Department of Labor has mandated these cost increases every year for the last ten years. Where are you based speaking on out on this? That it's based an, on the data. It's a terrible mandate. Based on the data. Okay. The data. Well, doesn't your lie. predecessor, Secretary Purdue, stated the Farm Labor Survey was not designed to be used as a source of wage rates for the H-2A program. Do you agree with him? I think it is an accurate and an appropriate uh, vehicle to be used. Why wouldn't it? Why wouldn't you want farm labor, the farm labor costs, to be calculated and, and included in that? Well, I, I think the point is. $18.50 an hour in Michigan, plus housing, plus transportation, our farmers cannot afford that. And you are standing by idly why the Department of Labor Secretary true. is continuing to raise the costs on American farmers who are not going to be able to make it. And those jobs are either going to go to other countries or automation, and our farms are going to be out of business. So, Mr. Secretary, I would ask you to stand up for American farmers and you're the only one in the administration that can do it. And if you aren't going to do it, no one else is. I stand up for farmers every single day, sir. Not on this issue. Well, I stand up for them. And I also stand up for farm workers who are a, a, an extraordinarily important part 
of the farm economy. So because Mr. Secretary, them, if I go back to my constituents, the message to them is the status quo is okay and just get used to it. No, the, the message is, the data is what it is. We're working to expand opportunities and income for you so that at the end of the day, both you and the farm workers can prosper. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you very much, Mr. Molnar. Ms. Pingree. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And, uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. And uh, I very much appreciate the